Bibles this evening, I want to turn your attention to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 19. 1 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 19 through verse 22 right here. I want you to know something real quick. We don't have to adapt to the things of this world. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? We don't need to lean towards our own understanding either. Too often we think that we need to do something and when we don't even need to do a thing. Amen? There's a way sometimes that seemeth right unto man, but the end result is the ways of death. Amen? Tonight I want to look a little bit about the nation of Israel who at the time was ruled was under a theocracy, under the government of God. But they made a statement, we want to be like everyone else. We want to be like all other nations. And I'm afraid that same attitude today has invaded the churches today. Instead of looking like the people of God, we want to be like the world. Hello. I want to pick up where I left a little bit Sunday morning. Because I'm telling you right now, if we look like the world, they ain't a light that's a burning. But a church that they is separated and standing out is shining and setting, standing forth in this lost and dying world that we are living in. First Samuel chapter 8 beginning in verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to hear and to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us that they may be like all the nations that our king might judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Uh, city. I want to go back right there in verse 19. Verse 19 and, and 20. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and said, Nay, that we, may, we will have a king over us, that we may be like all the nations. That we may be like all the nations. That's simply what I want to speak to you tonight for the next few minutes on, that we may be like all the nations. Heavenly Father, we tonight we ask for your anointing, dear God. I ask for your blessings, and I ask for you to anoint my lips to speak your word, dear God. Father, tonight I ask you, Lord, to stir the hearts of every individual in here. I ask you, Lord, to move upon every individual in here, Lord, uh, to let them hear this word uh, tonight, God. Uh, Father, we just pray for your blessings, and we pray for your anointing, Lord, uh, and we give you the glory, dear God, and we give you the praise in that precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Um, I'm reminded of a story of a gentleman who liked Chinese pit plaques. He had a lovely Chinese plaque at a time. And with curiosity, he raised figures, his figures on it. And he raised them and put it on the wall. But one day, the wall fell. It fell from the wall in which it was hung. And it cracked right across the middle. Soon after this, this gentleman was sent to China to get six more of these valuable plates um, and to ensure an exact match uh, he sent his broken plate as a copy uh, to his intense astonishment uh, when he received the six plates uh, six months later including the injured one uh, he found the Chinese had faithfully followed uh, his copy that each one of the plates that the new ones would have a crack uh, just like the one that he had sent to him. It had a crack right over it. Um, let me tell you tonight, if we are to copy um, the human pattern, if we are to copy man, uh, if we are to copy the ways of man, can I tell you, uh, we're going to copy their imperfections. Uh, can I tell you tonight, church of God, uh, can I tell you tonight, body of Christ, uh, that if we will 
follow Jesus uh, and take him as our perfect example. Uh, can I tell you tonight uh, that we will have uh, a perfect pattern? Uh, I've come by to tell you tonight uh, it's time to quit copying the world. Uh, it's time to quit looking to people. And it's time we start following after the pattern uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's time we start go following him uh, as our great example uh, and quite quit trying to be uh, like everyone else uh, and quit trying to conform to this world uh, but instead we need to conform to the image uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, we need to walk according to his ways uh, we need to walk according to this book tonight uh, we need to walk according to the way the word of God uh, tells us to walk tonight uh, my friend tonight uh, can I tell you that God has called us to be out of this world yes we are in this world but we are not of this world and I'm telling you it's time we try to quit adapting the patterns of this world if we're going to see a revival if we're going to see an awakening I'm telling you tonight we got to get back to the standard we got to get back to the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ but just like Israel right here I'm afraid tonight that many that are sitting on pews that many churches tonight that many in the body of Christ are wanting to be like the world tonight and I come by to tell you tonight that he don't want us like the world he wants us conformed in his image tonight you see Israel had a desire they wanted to be like other nations they wanted to be like these other nations uh, they seen around them. Uh, let me tell you what was going on here. Uh, we go back earlier in this chapter. Uh, we see that Samuel was growing old uh, and it seemed his boys were made judges over Israel uh, and the sons were wicked by the way. Uh, in fact the Bible tells us in verse 8 verse 3 in chapter 8 verse 3 and his sons walked not in their ways but he turned aside after looker and took bribes and perverted judgment these were the violate they were in violation of Deuteronomy 16 and 19 they were in violation of the very words of God in verse 5 you see something now the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel saying Samuel you are old and your son are evil and they walk not in your way so give us a king let me tell you something it told me right there first of all listen they didn't want the wisdom of the man of God did you hear me we are in a day that we are living right now we don't want the Samuels anymore did you hear me we don't want those who's been in the fight if you will we don't want to hear the counsel of the ones who's been in the this for a long time ago you know what the church world is saying today give us something new give us something new Samuel you're old Samuel you're over with you're too old Samuel to be ruling us your sons are evil your sons are they're not where they need to be but let me tell you let me tell you you may think tonight that they had a good gripe they had a right to say that but let me remember mind you also there's times when you don't realize what God's going to do that God can work of his plan inside of a mess you people don't realize also that also tonight that God would bring forth his king at his time but yet Israel was wanting one right here and right now God knew what was going on there Samuel was still capable but they wanted rid of the prophet they wanted rid of him because it boiled down that they wanted to be like everyone else they wanted to be like these other nations that surround them and I go back to tell you tonight there's a way that seemeth right unto man but the end result is death can I tell you about the elders of it 
Israel for just a second. Uh, they ran straight to Samuel, but there was not one of those elders right there. They, it is not recorded that they sought the Lord. Uh, can I tell you these people were in bad shape spiritually. Uh, they didn't want to seek the Lord. Uh, they had their mind made up. Uh, they needed to seek God, but they would not. Uh, instead, they had their mind up uh, that they wanted to have it uh, their way. Uh, they wanted to do it their way if you will uh, I think they wanted to have, make a decision without consulting God uh, and let me remind you church uh, when you don't consult God uh, you're inviting a mess did you hear me when you not don't consult God uh, there's going to be some consequences uh, that go along the way uh, I think too often uh, people jump ahead of God many times along the way uh, I think too often many Many times uh, we get our mind made up we want to do this and that uh, and we don't seek the counsel of God uh, can I tell you something church uh, it's time for the body of Christ uh, quit running and saying this is what I want to do this is how I want to do it uh, and it's time for the counsel the people of God uh, to seek the face of God uh, how many want revival around here uh, how many want to see an outbreak of the Holy Ghost around here uh, how many want to see so saved around here how many want to see the miraculous around here can I tell you programs ain't going to do it can I tell you ideas from man ain't going to do it what's going to do it is if the people of God will seek the counsel of God tonight we miss it we miss it we don't seek the counsel of God you see Israel God had plans for Israel to have a king. God's choice was not their choice, by the way. God's choice is usually not man's choice, by the way. Did you hear me? Can I tell you who man's choice was for their king? Was Saul. We know his outcome. Can I tell you who God had already chosen from the beginning? That was his choice. Can I tell you who the chosen one of God was to be king of Israel. Anybody know? It was David. He would get him to that point. But instead, it was going to come to David. He was going to establish David as a king. He was going to establish this little shepherd boy to be the king. But the people said, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. We want our king right now. We want to be like everyone else. We, everybody else is doing it. Everybody else has got a king, so we ought to have a king. We want to be like these other nations. We want to be like them. Ain't that something? The people of God, his nation, wanted to be like these other nations. Hello? Think about it. What they were saying, let us be like these idol-worshiping nations. Let us be like the Moabs. Let us be like the Canaanites. Let us be like the Edomites. That's in turn what they were saying. Can I tell you about something about the Edomites and the Canaanites and the Edomites? They were worshipers of idols. They were pagan, if you will. They were heathen, if you will. Hello? And this is what they wanted to be like. This is whose pattern is they were copying. This is the one who the elders of Israel saying, we want to be like them. Something's wrong when the people of God want to be like the world. Hello? Can I tell you that same philosophy has come into the church world tonight. Many have adopted the world's Philosophy. Hello. We've removed altars. We've removed hard preaching. We've removed good teaching to something that tickles the ear. And we want to know why revival ain't breaking loose. Hello. We want to know why God don't seem to be moving. It don't seem like nothing's taking place. It's because we have decided we wanted to be like everyone else uh, instead of what God wants us to be like. It's 
it's adapted here. Think about it. We've adopted the philosophy. Many have replaced good old-fashioned prayer time with entertainment. Instead of getting their spiritual needs met, they want to be come in to get entertained. I'm telling you, we want to get entertained. We want to adapt to the entertainment of the world. Oh, I'm going to say this. It may get, I may get a kickback. That's all right. God don't want rock and roll in his house. Amen. Amen. I'm, a, I'm sorry, but a church shouldn't look like a nightclub. Amen. We want to be like them. I've heard it said before, well, we want to be like them where we can win them. I got news for you. It's the, the preaching and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is what breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that draws. Can I tell you, if he, you want to entertain them, that's what you'll have to keep them with. You entertain them, you'll have to keep them with entertainment. Can I tell you what's replaced a, a movement of the Holy Ghost? We've allowed bells, whistles, smoke screens, flashing lights to replace a moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've allowed all of this to come in and take place. In essence, we are putting the Spirit of God on a new cart because the church, in many cases, are adapting to just like the world is, adapting the philosophy, saying you can live like you want, do as you want, dress like you want, and everything's gonna be all right. But I've come by to tell you that God still has a standard. What he said was right is still right, and what he called wrong is still wrong. Hey Amen. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Hey Amen. The standard of God is still the change. Hey Amen. Just like Israel was supposed to be different. The church is supposed to be different. Let me tell you with Israel, wishing to be like other nations, they had forgotten the glory and the happiness they had in the Lord. In, in being different than like any other nation. They had been under theocracy, if you will. God ruled them, God fought the battles, and God took care of them. But now they had, they had forgotten that, and all they thought was the grass was greener on the other side. Can I tell you something, honey? The grass ain't greener on the other side. Did you hear me? When you got God ruling, that's the best it is right there, amen? But yet, we want to be like everyone else. Yet, we want to be like these other nations, forgotten the glory that they had there. Instead, they start seeing these pagan lands. They seen every one nation and said, we want to just be like them. Amen. Remember as a child, you maybe have seen somebody. You want to be like them. Maybe you've seen an athlete. You want to be like them. Maybe you've seen somebody you wanted to be like. You wanted to be like them. Maybe you wanted to be a Troy Aikman or something at one time. You know, us, you know, us Cowboy fans can figure this out. Amen. There was times growing up you'd find that one you wanted to be like. And the one you wanted to be like, it wouldn't be long. You would start acting like them. You would start dressing like them. And you would start talking like them. Anybody know what I'm saying in here tonight? You see, that's what was going to happen because they wanted to be like everyone else. It wouldn't be long uh, till they had begin to adopt uh, the culture of the one that they wanted to be like. <laughs> and it sure wasn't the Lord God. Amen. They wanted to be like these idol nations. They wanted to be like everyone else. They wanted the king to rule over them. God, just give us a king. Let us have a king. Let us have it, Samuel. Appoint us a king and you just go off. We don't want to hear from you no more. But let me tell you, God's people were supposed to be different. And even today, God's people 
is supposed to be different. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, let me tell you, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness. Do you get that? Most people don't get that. That God's standard is right there. A holy nation. A peculiar nation. Let me tell you what it tells me. It tells me, folks, the church don't need to be acting like the world. The church don't need to be talking like the world. The church don't need to be dressing like the world. The church don't need to be trying to imitate the world. The question, why do we want to desire what the world has? It should be, the world should be desiring what the people of God have. Amen? Let me tell you, instead of Israel wanting what the other countries had, them other countries should have been wanting what Israel had. Oh, did you hear me? Did you hear me? It's a shame. Why do we want to be like others? Why does the church want to adapt to the things of the world? Did you hear me? I asked, is the things of the world better than what we already have? The answer is no. You can't get no better than God. Amen. I'm sorry, you can't get no better than being in the presence of God. Did you hear me? You can't get no better than serving the Lord God, Jehovah tonight. Hey Amen. I'm going to say it like this. You can't get no better than to be in the house of God on a Monday night. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. I'll tell you the problem. No, it's not better. But it does something. It entices The flesh. It entices the lust of the eyes. And it appeals to the pride of life. And it is very deceiving. Because let me tell you, what you may think is good could be deadly. What you think is good, there's consequences to it and we'll get there here in just a few minutes but what I'm coming by to tell you tonight that God's looking for a church tonight he's looking for a body of believers tonight that will be that peculiar people that will be them crazy people amen amen He's looking for a people. He's looking for a church that's not ashamed of him. Amen. He's looking for a church that don't want to be like the world. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I'm going to tell you tonight, if you fit in with the world, there's something wrong. If you want to fit in with them, there's something really wrong with you. Amen. Let me tell you, I didn't climb a roof last night to just be a show. I climbed the roof to shout the gospel out all over this area. Amen. And I've retired for this year, by the way. (laughs) That would have been a good deer stand up there. (laughs) Listen, too often we want to adapt to it. But we want it because it appeals to us. Amen. It appeals to what we desire. That's what Israel was going to do. Like everyone else. We'll just be like these other nations. That means we'll fit in with these Moabites, these Canaanites, and these Edomites. We'll fit in with the pagan nations. How many know a true church, a true body of Christ tonight is not going to fit in with the world? A true body of Christ tonight is going to upset the world. A true body of Christ is going to be different from all others. Why do we want to be like that? Lord, help us. I'll say this. I'll probably quote it again. But it seems to me the devils that we once fought, 
that many are just entertaining and getting right out cozy with them. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? The things that profess, they want to be like the other nations. They ain't got a bit of light there. You see, when you got a light, you're different. Everybody else is in darkness. But when you're different, I know we just had these cleaned. That's all right. They clean them every day. <laughs> Listen what I'm telling you right here. But when you're standing out different than anybody else, you're being that beacon that says, I don't have to be like the world. I don't have to fit into them. There's something different. You don't have to have the world tonight. Did you hear me? You see what light does when the rest of the world's dark. Light shines in darkness. Amen. I can get out here under these lights out here. We got these street lights, these LED lights. Man, they'll bright up everything. It can be pitch dark. And one of those lights comes on out there. And all of a sudden, you can see really good with these lights. My Lord, can you think about what the world could see if the church would get back to, to being a holy nation of peculiar people that is set apart, that is standing out saying, we don't want to be like the world. We want to offer you something different. Amen? We want to offer you a good taste of the Holy Ghost. We want to offer you a good dose of salvation. We want to offer you a good thing of God tonight. My Lord, we need to quit trying to be like other nations and get back to being what God has called us to be the church of Jesus Christ the body of Christ that is his extension on earth this continuation of his ministry but we don't want to be that we want to fit in with the other crowd we want to fit in with everyone else we want to be like everything else the whole time, let me tell you, tonight, Israel just wasn't rejected. Samuel, they wasn't rejected his sons, even though they had problems. They were really, in essence, rejecting God himself. They were rejecting the plan of God. It's in essence what they were going to. Verse 7 right there. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign, should not reign over them. Here's where it boiled down to. They did not want God to reign over them anymore. Oh, I'm getting ready to hit something right here. Oh, I'll probably get a cutback. You hear me. Those that don't like to submit, you got an issue. You got a problem with God. I hear people say, I don't answer to nobody. I ain't submitting to nobody. I've heard, let me just say this. That's wrong. Did you hear me? That is wrong. In essence, you're rejecting God. That attitude, and I'm going to tell you here in just a minute, that attitude is a, is a rebellious, witchcraft spirit. Amen? Amen, it is. It is. You see, you may not want to hear it, but we all, ultimately we all answer to God. We all got the answer to God, even in normal life. If you hold a job, you answer to somebody. Even here at the church of God, I'm the pastor here. Yes, I got the Lord over me. But I got people in Carlisle over me. And I got people in Cleveland, Tennessee, that I've got the answer to also. We don't want to hear that word submission. We don't want people to rule and reign over us. We don't want a God to reign over us. Can I tell you tonight the reason society don't want God to reign over them? Because they don't want to answer to God. But I don't care what they do. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess he is Lord. They don't want to hear it. They, these people begin to not just reject Samuel and him. God said they're rejecting me. They're rejecting my rule over them. 
you can't tell me what's going on in our land tonight. The rid of trying to get rid of Bibles, trying to remove the name Jesus, try to silence the gospel is nothing more. Saying, God, we don't want to we don't want you to rule over us. Did you hear me? We don't want you to rule over us. That's what it boils down to. That's what it all comes down to. God, we don't want you to rule over us. I'm just going to say it. Why do you think they kick the Bible out of schools in their public places? But they bring the Koran in, and they'll bring Harry Potter in. Hey, man, why do you think they want to remove every trace of aspect of Jesus Christ? They don't want the name Jesus mentioned because they rejected him. They don't want him to rule. Let me tell you tonight. They didn't want to wait on them, God. They didn't want to wait for his promise. They didn't want God's choice of their king. They wanted what they wanted, and they wanted it now. Pretty much what, how, how do you say today that people reject God? I hit a little bit, but there's people that sit on church pews. There's people that profess to know him that will reject him. When they don't line up with this word right here, did you hear me? Amen. I'm here tonight. Let me tell you, there'll be times that people will refuse. They will not listen. They'll put their fingers in their spiritual ears, if you will, said, I'm not paying attention to this. They will not heed. They will not listen to what the Word of God says. There's been times when I've been in a pulpit somewhere along the way you know God's talking to them, and I've just seen it here times. Don't worry who, because I ain't going to meet you, but I've seen it a few times here, and I've seen it everywhere I've gone. People, you know God was talking to, but they did not listen, and they rejected it. They weren't rejecting the messenger. They were rejecting God. Amen? I used to say, sometimes you feel like you're splitting blue in the face. You can preach so hard, you can tell so many times till you become blue in the face. I've said that before, and I get reminded by the Lord. They ain't rejecting you. They're rejecting me and my word. When we refuse to line up with the word of God, when we refuse to do it God's way, can I tell you it ain't the true man or woman of God that they're rejecting. It ain't the speaker. They're guilty of rejecting the Lord himself. In fact, they're in rebellion against God. And the Bible says rebellion against the spirit. Rebellion is as the same as witchcraft. In first. Samuel 15 and 23 for rebellion is as the same as witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He also, also rejected thee from being king. There you go. Their rebellion, their rejection, their stubbornness, idolatry come from the fact that Saul, the king, Saul, it come from the fact that he rejected the word of God. There it is, plain and simple. So the next time you think you ain't going to listen to what the word of God says, you need to understand you're in rebellion to what he's saying. Amen? Because he rejected the words of God. Folks, and I'm telling you, rejecting God and his word is rebellion. So again, I ask you, why in the world would a church, a people of God, want to live like a world that's in rebellion to God? Have you ever thought about that? Why do you want what they got coming? <laughs> Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I've never figured it out. Why people want to walk as close to hell as they can. I want to walk as far from it as I can. Hey Amen. What are you getting at, preacher? 
I'm telling you, it all boils down. Here's where it all boils down, the three things. Me, myself, and I. What we want. Not what God wants. Not what God wants. Not what he wants. But yet, the rejection of God's word. God would try to warn them. God would say they would be consequences to come in your way if you do it. God would even give them warnings. Let's go into verse 11 right here. Going to 11 through verse 18. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. Listen, he will take your sons. He will appoint them for himself, for his chariots. And to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, captains over fifties. And he will set them ear to his ground to reap his harvest and to make instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be comforteries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servant. He will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to the officers and to his servants. And he will take to the men's servants and your maid servants and your godliest young men and your asses and put them to work. Uh, he will take the tenth of your sheep uh, and you shall be his servant uh, and you shall cry out in that day because of your king and you have chosen, ye shall have chosen you uh, and the Lord will not hear you uh, in that day. Despite the warning, it did not make the slightest impression on them. God told them, here's what's going to happen if you jump ahead of yourself and do it your way. There's going to be consequences to this action. But if you want it, you can have it but you're going to have what comes right along with it. He told them, he's this, the, God warned them. The prophet gave them the word of God, but it didn't make no slightest impression on them. You know, all they could, all they could see was their ways. All they could see is what they wanted. They weren't paying no attention. In fact, I imagine many were laughing. Many were full of unbelief. It's just like tonight. How many don't believe there's a, re, there's a consequence for rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Amen? There's people who will laugh and scoff at the idea of hell. But it don't change the fact God told them, here it is. God laid the warning out but they were so wrapped up in self, no matter what God told them, it wouldn't make the slightest impression on them. They were so hardened. They didn't want to hear God. They didn't believe God. God said, okay, you, despite everything, despite everything that would come, you'd lose your sons and your daughters. You servants, you crops. You lands and your wealth to support a kingdom. But despite all of that, they were stuck in their own way. They were stuck in doing things they wanted to be because they desired to be like other nations. They desired to be like all these other pagan nations and didn't realize they was constant, wouldn't pay attention to the warning label of what would happen what are you getting at preacher yes there was problems that day Samuel's sons were anything but righteous but they would not seek the Lord you know, that's what it all boiled down to they had their wants and they had their desires can I tell you tonight your wants and desires may not be the best thing for you you quiet on me on that. 
Your wants and desires may not be the best thing for you. Did you hear me? But they wanted to be like everyone. They may be consequences. There'll be consequences many times when we jump ahead of the Lord. They will be consequences. Let's put it like that. Too many times we think we know better than God. That's what it all boiled down to. And I asked you tonight, when is the creation greater than the creator? When did the creation know more than, in, than God knows? Amen? His ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are greater than your thoughts. Did you hear me? But they wouldn't hear it. I'm telling you, you hear what I'm about to tell you tonight. You may get what you want, but you'll lose something far greater in return. God said, you can have it, but there's going to be some consequences that go along with it. You're going to face it. You've rejected me. He said, I, you'll, come, you'll turn to me. You'll realize it. You'll turn to me. But guess what he said he wouldn't do? He said, then, he said, he told him, he said, I won't hear you. He said, I won't hear you. Give them what they want. He said, they'll cry out in that day because of your king and these consequences that you come, which, which, which you shall have chosen, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Church, we need to quit desiring what we think's best and desiring what God thinks best. I'm afraid tonight, in this last day, many churches have, we have adopted the world, wanting to be like them so much, that Inkabod has been written on many doors. Amen? I'm afraid that too many believers are sitting there wanting to be like the world so much that the Spirit of God has departed from them and some don't even realize it. Samson didn't. Sister Marcy, you can get ready to come. I'm afraid. We've entertained, listen to this. You people need to get this. The devil, I want to repeat this again. I've said it earlier, but I think it needs worth repeating. The devils that we once fought against we're now entertaining and getting cozy with. You can't get cozy with a devil. You better not entertain him either. You hear me? In some places, they're right out accepting it. Let me tell you, Israel would bring a, produce a heavy burden. It would increase upon them because of simply what they wanted. They wanted flesh. They wanted self more than they wanted God. Preacher, you preach a lot on this. I'm going to keep on because it's an issue. They wanted what they wanted instead of what God wanted. They wanted their man instead of God's man. They wanted their way instead of God's way. Let me tell you quickly, the things we so desire in our flesh can cost us more spiritually and physically than we even realize. Everyone stand it if you're able. The price is, he is heavy. Israel would have a heavy price. Consequences came along with the world. I'm telling you today. Here's what the Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord, I believe the Lord's saying it's time to quit trying to be like the rest. It's trying to quit be like other nations. These altars are going to be open. And it's time that we get back to being what he's called us to be. It's time to get back to being the light that he's called us to be, being different tonight. I'll tell you something, Houston Town, God has called you. He has called you to be a light to shine forth, to be different in this area. We need to quit trying to copy the world and try to be like the world. And we just need to lift, we need to let the world see something different. We need to let the world know. We need to let those that are bound know that there's a Savior that can change their life. 
We need to let the world know that there's a one called Jesus that can set them free. We need to let the world know tonight that if he, we can let our light shine to let them know that in this dark world there's one that's calling their name tonight. There's one that can deliver them from the bondages of sin. But church, I'm telling you where it starts at tonight. Revival will never begin in the world. Revival begins in the house of God among God's people. God's people must get things in order. God's people must commit to being what God has called them to do. Get back to the basics. Get back to being his people and say, Lord, here am I. Who would say tonight, I don't want to be like the world. I want to be like Jesus. I want my pattern to be like Jesus. I want to pattern my life after Christ. I'm not going to pattern my life after the things of this world. They may ridicule me. They may mock me. They may scoff me. They may laugh at me. They may scorn me, throw rocks at me. But I can't be like the world. I've got to be like Jesus. I'm going to shine. I'm going to allow that light to shine through me in a dark world. You see, church revival begins with you. Judgment begins in the house of God. Judgment begins among God's people. You need to be awakened. We need to throw the things that are out and just get back to saying, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Lord, tonight we pray, God, for your hand upon each one. We pray, Lord, for your touch, dear Lord, upon each individual. Lord, don't let us desire the things of this world. But, Lord, let us desire you. Let us hunger for you. Let us be a reflection of you, Lord. I don't want to copy the world. Oh, Jesus, I want us to be like you, Lord. Let us shine in this dark world. Oh, God, forgive us. We're trying to adapt to things of this world and let us get back to be adapted to the things of the kingdom. To get back to your path. Get back to the old path, if you will. Oh, Lord, tonight let us redevelop. Let us gain that appetite for fasting and prayer. A hunger for the word. A hunger for the house of God. And a hunger for you. As the heart painteth after water, let our souls painteth after you. Oh, God, tonight, let us be awakened. Let us be awakened. Don't let us desire to be like other nations, but let us desire to be that holy nation that you called us to be. Lord, tonight, we just lift you up. Lord, and we praise you, dear God. And we just exalt you, dear God, this evening. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Take it all.